Hello, everybody. It's me. I'm back. So, today I thought that I would share with you guys my music collection. So, I am one of those people that prefers listening to physical music. I know it's a dying breed. It's been a dying breed for like a decade now with digital music and streaming and the like popping up. I have a love-hate relationship with Spotify in particular. Um, so that's kind of where I stand on that sort of thing. But I am a physical music lover. I love CDs. I love cassettes. I love vinyls. No, no, no. It, it just has a different feeling. It has a different feeling. It has a different vibe to it. It's it's just a different experience, you know? If I had one of those, like, really old vintage cars, I'd probably have, like, an E-Trax or something like that, but I can't drive. So, you don't have money for a car. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, um, I thought that I would showcase a bit of my physical music collection, kind of talk about a little bit of my favorites, um, you know, talk about apps or, like, different things that I use to find some new kinds of music, um, you know, places that I buy, like, vinyl or CDs or, um, cassettes, uh, you know, good ideas for pricing, different kinds of research, or, you know, I guess my overall experience of buying physical stuff and some things maybe you could try, so stick around if you want to see that. You you know what I just realized? In an earlier video, I said that I wasn't a materialistic person. And I mean, I, I still believe that I'm not. I think materialism, like to be materialistic, it's like you're, um, what's that word? That I'm, um, you're like, you're like pulled by items. You know what I mean? Like bribed by items. I'm not like that. I can buy things and easily give it away without, like, you know, a second's notice. Like, if somebody needed the shirt off my back, you know, it's yours. I, I don't mind giving somebody a nip slip. We all have nipples, you know? Um, but I noticed that this is, like, the second video that I'm talking about, like, owning a collection of things. And I'm like... How can you say that you're not a materialistic person, but you you have collections of things? You own, like, so much shit of the same thing, like... So, you can drag me for that, if you'd like. But, um, yeah, uh, stick around and we'll see where this goes. Okay, guys, so, I have not moved that much because everything that I own is pretty much in this corner. You know, that's all my, this is all my, uh, wackadoodle stuff that I love and I think is important to me. This record player, it's a little dusty right now to be honest, but I still love her. Still my favorite. So yeah, we got some vinyls. Tons and tons and tons of vinyls and stuff like that. Um, then below, well... So it's just like random stuff. I have um, this little mini like piano that I use for practicing and things like that. And then below, down here, we've got, this is a bunch of sheet music. These are my cassettes. These are my earplugs, like in-ears, except these aren't the ones that connect like I don't know if you guys know anything about when you have people who play like live music or instruments, but a lot of the time they have a thing called in-ears. It's like a little thing that goes in your ears, I think pretty self-explanatory, but um, they connect through like this little string. You can put it like a pack and then put it like behind you or you know, whatever it is so that you can hear certain monitors, hear yourself better, hear instruments or to keep you on track. Yeah, but these are kind of like earplugs. I used them for when I would do like rehearsals and stuff like that. If I was in, you know, like a rehearsal space or a studio space and, 
you know, all of the vibrations and the waves and stuff. It can get really loud, especially if you're using amps and, you know, you want to protect your hearing. Protecting your hearing is super important, but that's not what this video is about. So, yeah, we have cassettes in this lovely, lovely, lovely um, box right here. So, let me grab these bad boys, put them on the side so I can pick some of my favorites for you guys. Um, we have tons of sheet music, which isn't a part of this, but I'd say... Yeah, these two binders. This is sheet music from almost 10 years, I'd say. I probably have a bunch more like lying around in other binders or notebooks or whatever, but these are the ones that I've like kind of organized. Um, in this binder in particular, this is probably like mostly high school stuff or like things that I would do on the side and Jesus, when I was in high school, you would have to learn like 25, 30 pieces in like two months to be able to do, or at least I had to do it because I would sing with like all of the choirs that we had in my high school. I was kind of like my choir teacher's right hand man um, in that sense. And she would have me sing and learn pieces for everyone. We had like five or six choirs and I only was taking one choir class, but I still sang with everybody. So I would have to memorize like all of these before the semester was over. Ooh. And then under it, we have my CDs. This one was like a college binder of like big stuff and everything. But under it, we have my CD case. Um, people who are my age, if you're not somebody who's into physical music, you probably have no idea what this is. Um, if you're anywhere around my age, because I, I don't know, I notice that a lot of people around my age, I mean, it, it's easy to spend $10, $5 a month on Spotify or Apple Music, Pandora, you know, whatever it is. So a lot of people don't collect physical music and a lot of people kind of like get rid of their parents' stuff and don't really, you know, care about that kind of thing. But this is my CD collection. This is my little CD thing. I think my neighbor gave this to me. Either my neighbor or my mom. No, my neighbor gave this to me. She also has a CD collection, but she's 40. So I think that's a little more <laughs> normal for that sense. Can see. CDs were really popular, you know, when she was growing up as a teenager, but got my CDs, got some good gems in here, and then finally, obviously, we have all the vinyls, which I've shown you before. We have all the vinyls. Um, I'm not going to take them all out. You know what I mean? I'm not going to take them all out because... There's no point in that. It would take way too long and it's kind of stressful. So I'm going to pick a couple of my favorites and we'll talk about them. Talk about the experience, see how it goes. So yeah, I'll try. I'll do my best to have like a variety, but I don't really have all of the kinds of styles of music that I would personally listen to all the time. I've been really on a massive like world music kick and like listening to stuff from all over the world from like the turn of the century until now so I haven't really listened to some of the stuff that I have here to be honest but I'm also broke so I can't <laughs> really buy vinyl. Um, I think the last set of vinyl that I bought was from a thrift store near my apartment and um you know, but we'll talk about that when we get to the actual looking at things and talking about my favorites and talking about like places and things that you can go to get some stuff if you want to start a physical music collection or just have a couple, you know? It's always good to have some.
back, my friends. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with cassettes because I like my cassettes, but the the collection isn't like really fleshed out. A lot of them are cassettes that like my mom was nice enough to give to me. Cassettes are one of those things that sometimes you can get really lucky when you go to like thrift stores or vinyl shops and stuff like that and find one for a good price. Some people oversell them because they suck. Um, but you know. So, let's see. I have, this one used to be in a case, but this is Janis Joplin's Greatest Hits. I love Janis Joplin. Let's see if you can see. Yeah, Janis Joplin's Greatest Hits. I love Joplin. She's a cool, cool, cool lady. Um, once again, my mom is nice enough to give this to me, so I don't really have like the experience of going to get cassettes in particular. Um, but I just love them. They offer like a whole different sound and vibe. They're kind of obviously a bit more delicate because they have like the little, um, I don't know exactly what this is called. It's kind of like when you develop like a disposable camera and they have that really delicate like camera slide, like foil thing, film. It's kind of like that, in a sense, but it's even more delicate, and obviously if you pull it, you rip it, it gets messed up, so. That's one that I really, really like. This one is hilarious that we didn't know we had, but we have the I'm Blue, da ba dee ba da 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 ba dee da ba da <laughs> which was a really big hit when I was growing up. <laughs> And I did not know we had this. And then when I got all the cassettes and I looked through it, I think I listened to this. This is my like Eiffel 64 or something. I think that's what the original group is called. But, oh my god, I think I listened to this like 40 or 50 times. And it got to the point where everyone was like, please stop playing this stop it like we get the nostalgic value we're over it it died when it died years ago like just stop stop playing it and i was like <laughs> oh i'm blue like oh such a good one um what else we have this one which i think most people have or maybe most people's parents have this in some kind of um variation but it's meatloaf <laughs> Everyone, I feel like most parents have like a bad out of hell. This is hits out of hell, so this is like a compilation album. But a lot of people like own some kind of meatloaf thing. I mean, meatloaf is great. It's one of those bands that people are always like hating on for some reason that makes no sense. They never explain why they think they're bad or anything, even though everyone loves them. They're just lying to themselves. That's what it is. But this is an awesome cassette. It's really cool. The quality is really good. And obviously, if you keep them all safe, they last long. Um, I think a good website for cassettes in general would probably be Discogs. But Discogs is like a music site that has pretty much everything you could buy the craziest things on Discogs that you probably wouldn't even think you could find. Discogs is incredible. Um, shout out to the person who told me about Discogs, who was my manager when I worked at a rehearsal studio a couple years ago. Coolest dude ever. He was a DJ. He told me about Discogs. So, shout out to you. Um, yeah, I think, I think I have a bunch of more cassettes here, but because I don't know as much about stuff like that and getting the experience, I think I'm going to keep it to those. Those are, I would say, my favorites just because I really enjoy listening to that kind of music. It's just something I, I wouldn't necessarily say I grew up on it. Um, 
but it's just stuff that I like and I enjoy listening to when I get the chance and I feel like, you know, popping in a cassette. Okay, let's slide this bad boy in here. Jeez. I have, ugh, I probably have, like, oops, I probably have at least 100 CDs or something, maybe, maybe more. Um, have a lot. It's a very heavy bag. I think I bought my first CD when I was 10. I bought three CDs all together, and it was, no, I wasn't 10. Maybe I was 11? 10 or 11. I bought my first CD by myself, and at a, a Borders, if anybody remembers what that is. I don't think they have them anymore. Um, but I got Katy Perry's Teenage Dream. <laughs> um, was I 10 when that record came out? No, 11. When did that record come out? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I got Katy Perry's Teenage Dream. <laughs> I got Eminem's Recovery. <laughs> And I got Usher's, I think, Versus album. So you could tell that my music taste at the time was very all over the place. <laughs> um, I don't know why. And I listened to those CDs obsessively because I had a boombox. And I loved that boombox with everything. I loved that boombox with everything in, in me. It was my favorite thing in the entire world. I just loved her so much. I just loved everything about her. And then one weekend, I think I went to go stay at a friend's house, and I came back, and the boombox was gone. It was gone. A CD that was in the boombox went with it because no one cared to check to see if there was anything of mine inside. They just got rid of it because they felt like it was taking up space in my room. But that's, that's another story for another day. Um... The first CD I've ever gotten, because I still have it, is actually whoop, Vanessa Hudgens' CD, Baby V. You know, back when her and Zac Efron were still a thing. Yeah, this is the first CD I ever got. I think my uncle got, gave it to me. He gave it to me with this and a Spice Girls track CD. Um, if you couldn't tell by now, I'm American. Um... I know the Spice Girls were popular worldwide, but I was relatively young when he gave me both of these CDs, and I knew Vanessa Hudgens by name, and I don't think I knew the Spice Girls by name at the time, so I kind of was definitely ungrateful, and I didn't really listen to the Spice Girls one, like, at all. It took me a couple years. When I got a bit older, and I was putting all of my CDs together, um... That's when I noticed that I had it, and I was like, oh my god. Ugh, like, you know, it was one of those, like, um, epiphany moments where you feel, my life makes sense. This is a CD that, this is my mom's, but I have it because it's from her favorite movie ever, which is Rockstar. Um, it's about a rock star. But Bon Jovi is on the soundtrack, and Bon Jovi is my mom's favorite band. She loves Bon Jovi. This is a fun fact about me, but my first ever concert was a Bon Jovi concert. It was dope. It was Bon Jovi and Daughtry, and Daughtry sang into a megaphone, and it was such a good show, but this is my mom, like one of her favorite movies, and she used to play this CD all the time. Because I think... I don't think Bon Jovi did, like, the soundtrack to the CD, but they sing, like, three or four songs on this, and she just played it all the time, and she just loved it so much. So that's a, that's a good memory. Let's see. Everything else in here, except for, you know, like, maybe, like, three or four CDs are, you know, completely mine. I bought them with my own money um, when I had, you know, jobs or Christmas money because I'm you know, when you're relatively young. I have a Green Day Bluegrass CD, which is kind of lame because I don't have any normal Green Day CDs. That was a band that I kind of grew up on. Like, when I was a little kid, 
and you, you know, go on a car ride or whatever it is, um, the only things that would ever really play in the car were the white stripes fell in love with a girl and I was like five and I would headbang to it because who doesn't love Jack White? I feel like he just looks, he just gets better with age. He's like a fine wine. Him and Julian Casablancas of the Strokes. They just get better with age. You know, those, those are two dudes that I, I know groupie culture is kind of dead and a lot of people are against it nowadays. Um, you know, I think that it was another time and another experience and a lot of the time it was consensual even if it was morally wrong. Um, it's not for me to decide for those people how they felt about, you know, their experiences and everything and what they wanted to do. Obviously there are situations where it wasn't consensual and you get dicky, shitty people like you do in every other situation, but um, if I was a groupie, I would love to be like Julian Casablanca's groupie. You know what I mean? Like he is... He's just... He's just my favorite kind of guy. Like I just love moody... Genius. <laughs> Like, moody dudes. Like, I love moody, slightly crazy dudes. But, um, yeah. Jack White, Julian Casablancas. God's gift to creation. Um, my dad would play... It's the dreaded email again. I'm not that popular. <sighs> okay. Um, my dad would play Jesus of Suburbia by, um, Green Day. So often and that song is 11 minutes long and i know all of it i know every single line and lyric of jesus of suburbia i swear to god you know like when you see um i don't know if anybody's seen like those memes i, I mean I'm, I'm sure some people have but they have those memes where they're like if somebody is holding a gun to your head and they tell you to recite every single lyric of a song that you know to live, like, what would be the song that you would pick? <laughs> it would be Jesus of Suburbia. Or maybe, like, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Because I know both of those songs, like, by heart, could probably recite them in my sleep. Like, it's just one of those things. And then he would only play Frank Sinatra. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've heard the summer wind. So many times. So many times. No hate, because, you know, Frank Sinatra is a great, 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 great dude. Oh my god, oh. I forgot that I have a CD actually in my um, record player right now. It is Kings of Leon Mechanical Bull. Incredible album, if you've never listened to it. I think it came out in 2013. Kings of Leon, fantastic band. Um... Caleb Folliwell is once again one of those like moody, creative genius, crazy dudes that I just think are awesome. They're awesome and underrated in my opinion. You could think that's wrong, but I don't really care, you know, but incredible record. One of my favorite CDs that I own, but it's currently in the player, so. Um, this is also another CD that I love. And I bought it. I went to I went to a record store that does not exist anymore in New York City. And they used to do this really cool thing where they would sell some CDs. They'd have tons and tons and tons of piles of CDs for 88 cents. And I was able to get this Simon and Garfunkel CD for 88 cents. It's their, um, I believe most of the songs on this is live from when they performed in Central Park. It's either Central Park or when they performed at um, Forest Hill Stadium, but I love Simon and Garfunkel. I grew up listening to them. Like, when I hear 59th Street Bridge, I feel a nostalgia and a happiness that is seldom felt in life. You know, so this is, this is definitely one of my favorite CDs. I have very fond memories of that record store that does not exist anymore. 
it was awesome. It was owned by this. It was owned by this older black man who used to wear like these really funky like cobbler newsboy caps, and he was such a really nice guy. And he would only open the shop like when he felt like it. Um, I hope he's doing well. It's it's been a few years since they closed like for good, um, but I love Simon and Garfunkel. I actually um, I got to see Paul Simon at his last ever show two years ago. You know, um, oh my God, it was it was such an incredible experience. By the way, that Katy Perry CD I mentioned before, <laughs> um, but. I got to see Paul Simon at his last ever show and it was such an amazing experience. I was still living in California at the time and this was like right after I had completed some of my own gigs and different stuff so it was like I did a gig, I did my finals and then I hopped on a plane and flew out to go meet my mom and I got home at I think like 7 a.m. in the morning. 7 a.m. Yeah, I got home at 7 a.m. and um, stayed up the entire day. Stayed up and then got ready to go see Paul Simon. <laughs> and it had poured pretty much half of the day. It was raining so badly. And so the we was at Forest Hill Stadium. And for people who don't know, Forest Hill Stadium is actually just like Forest Hills Park. Um, so it's just a bunch of grass and everything like that. So everybody's shoes were kind of like sinking into the mud and you would get stuck and everyone was running and trying to get there to try to get some kind of level of like good, a good view. And I was just kind of like, I am so happy and like so lucky to be here it didn't matter to me if I was like really up close to the front or like all the way in the back it's just like the fact that I get to see somebody who I've admired you know my entire life it's like I nowadays when I have a bad day like I just will go and take a shower and I'll just be sitting there like slow down you move too fast you know like whatever and sing the songs and you you feel it like in your heart so it was such an amazing thing his voice still sounds incredible, which is crazy because he's like 76 years old or something. You know, he is, you know, he is definitely older than I am. Um, and it, it was such an amazing experience and I was happy that I got to share it with my mom because, I mean, I love my mom. We're very close, um, which I, I mean, I'm, I'm also very fortunate to have a, a close relationship with my mother. And it was, it was just a nice, a nice experience and I really love it. I love Paul Simon. Um, I have a bunch of Elvis CDs. I have six Elvis CDs right here that I bought in a set. If you couldn't tell, I like Elvis. <laughs> and then I have a, an Elvis. I'll just attempt to show it. They had like back in the day, probably like 10 years ago, they had like sets where you could buy like five or six CDs in a row. So I did that for Weezer. I did that for Rush. Um, I was on a really big kick of those kind of musicians at the time. Um, but we got a bunch of, <laughs> I got a bunch of Elvis tracks here and then I have like Elvis love songs and then I have an Elvis live covers CDs, which I mean, they're awesome. He sounds amazing. I mean, Elvis is Elvis. Um, what else? I've got I've got a Pink Floyd record that has one of my favorite Pink Floyd songs ever, which is uh, Have a Cigar. I love Have a Cigar. I think it's incredible. But I'll be talking about Pink Floyd more because I have it in the vinyls. This is probably going to be a relatively long video, so if you don't want to hear me drone on, I understand. I don't blame you, but I love music. Music is... What's that um, thing? <laughs> Graphic design is my passion. Like Music is my passion. I've loved it my entire life, and, you know, I love talking about it. And no one ever wants to sit and talk to me about it and, like, nerd out. Actually, recently, two of my really, really close friends, it, like... 
Oh, it, it made me so happy because they've been getting into like more of the music, like historical side. Um, because people have been making uh, medieval <laughs> covers and like versions of popular songs. So we were talking about it and I got to pull out my like music nerd hat and talk about like the different things stylistically and like how it relates to like modern music and how you can even figure out like how medieval songs could work with modern music and the differences in instruments and like what one instrument that was around back then evolved into another kind of instrument you know what I mean it's like it's like when you think of string instruments and I won't give the history to that it'll take too long this video will be like 10 hours long but this is a this is a Hallmark CD for me it is um, Mozart it's yeah it's the Mozart's classics CD um, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I sang classical music and I sang in ensemble choirs and stuff like that for about six years from when I was 12 until I was 17, 18. So classical music and opera and orchestra and stuff is kind of like a, a guilty pleasure of mine. I love it. I love polyphonic music. I love you know, hymns and things, and I, you know, sometimes, I feel like when I'm in a very, dr like, dramatic, broody kind of mood, I just want to sit and listen to, like, Josquin Dupree and get angry, like, just listen to his Kyrie and stuff like that. Um, I've got, like, Janis Joplin again, I've got Joni Mitchell, The Carpenters, I've got that. I've got that Eminem recovery album. <laughs> it's good. It was a good record. I can't lie. I liked it. I listened to it so many times. It was such a good record. Um, so don't clown on me, okay? <laughs> um, we've got Weezer. We've got Rush. Love Rush. Getty Lee. You amazing, interesting man. I've got that. Um, got Red Chili Peppers. I've got Queen. Queen is my favorite band, if I haven't mentioned it before. Queen is my favorite band. Oh, I have this guy. I'm going to mention him because I don't think a lot of people know about him. None of my friends knew about him when I got the CD. And this is another 88 cent CD. I found it and I like got so many splinters that day, but it was so worth it. Um, this is Newton Falconer. He is one of my favorite songs from this record, which is Dream Catch Me. I love that song. It is just so beautiful. And he's like this ginger lumberjack looking guy. Maybe he cut his hair, but at the time he didn't. And it's, it's just such a nice like folksy rock song. I don't know. I loved it. Newton Faulkner is totally underrated in my opinion. Maybe he's not to you, but no one I know knows him. And he's just, he's just great. I was so happy when I found this CD, and it was 88 cents, like, you can't go wrong, you know? Um, let's see, I've got the Smiths, I've got the 1975, I've got Blondie, I have some Coldplay, I got Chuck Berry, gotta love Chuck Berry, he's an incredible dude, father of rock and roll, am I right? I've got, um... Some Adele. I have an all Elton John love song CD, which is, I mean, it's an amazing CD. Let me tell you. Wait, which one's this one? Kings of Leon, again. Um, let's see. I got Jazz. I got Nirvana Unplugged. Um, I have to be honest and say that it is, it has been very hard for me to get into Nirvana. I struggle. I struggle getting into Nirvana, I can't lie. Um, obviously you have staples that a lot of people really like and enjoy, but I don't know, I, I like, I've really struggled. I think I need to like, I need to meet somebody who really likes their discography and they can give me a good idea of different songs and stuff that are good to listen to so I can get a better, you know, can really appreciate it because Nirvana's Nirvana, you know. Kurt Cobain is an incredible, interesting guy, and I should get into it. 
But yeah, that's, um, those are some of my favorite CDs. Um, lots of good memories and times from there. And I don't know, it feels so nice to kind of have the CD. It's a different experience. And personally for me, I feel like the more digital music gets, the more compressed it kind of sounds at times. And that's, I don't know, I get a headache like, some producers should really, like, chill out when it comes to, or maybe it's masters. I think, honestly, I think it's probably more on the producing and, like, engineering side, but, like, the way that they compress the actual music and the way that they edit it and do all the stuff, it is just, I don't know, it sounds so compressed and pixelized and fake that I will literally get a migraine if I listen to newer stuff on my computer for more than like an hour or so because it's just so I don't want to say it's bad because it's not bad but it's like it's just too much for me it just sounds so fake like it doesn't sound real and then someone will be like yeah um this record was made with like real instruments and I'm like oh really like I couldn't tell because it just sounds like you had a bunch of like robots going in and just used everything on like Reason or Ableton or like GarageBand and that was it. Like you wouldn't even be able to tell there are real musicians there playing because it's just so digital, like digitized. It just is awful. <laughs> um, that's like me as an old man ranting. So final records. Um, it's become, I guess, more popular recently. A lot of people have been on this whole like vintage vinyl kick and wanting to have finals, which I think is good. Um, I also think it sucks in a way because people exploit that and they will sell a vinyl for three times the price that it was when they bought it, which, okay, if you want to look at it like in inflation terms, whatever, but it's also shitty and shady regardless. Like, you know, you take away from the experience and people being able to enjoy it because you're so obsessed with turning a major profit. I mean, it, it's greedy, but... We don't need to discuss that. Not now. Um, so yeah, a lot of vinyls that I get, I have gotten in thrift stores, I've gotten in actual record stores. Um, I've been given them for gifts. Uh, a good idea for any kind of, like, vinyl record shop going, as I think that you should always go to, like, kind of a mom and pop shop. A lot of the time you can negotiate certain prices, the people are much nicer, you can make friends and be a bit friendlier and, you know, really learn more about like where the records came from and everything and it, I don't know, they, I remember I went to a vinyl shop in um, Jersey City and I found a bunch of amazing like one dollar vinyls, I think I ended up buying like 15 records that day. And I found so many, like, gems. And the guy was so surprised that I was able to find, like, so many stuff that I like. And we sat and kind of spoke about a little bit of it. And he was so awesome about it. And he ended up giving me a discount and was like, hey, if you come back, like, here's a little discount, like, code or whatever. You'll get $10 off, like, the next time you come. Which is, you know, it's really nice and it's cool. So, um, you know, and it encourages people to continue there collection and it's like at the end of the day I understand people wanting to turn a profit and having to you know pay their bills and stuff like that but you should never exploit people it's just not fair and then it takes away like I said the enjoyment of it but um going to mom and pop shops are fun you tend to find really interesting things that you would never think about um I recommend if you're just kind of going in to like pop in there have an open mind I've found vinyls or artists that maybe I've heard about in passing or I've never really heard about, but they just have cool, like, sleeves. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'll give it a listen. It's in a genre that I find interesting, so, you know, I'll give it a go and see how, see if I like it. Um, or if you do want to find a specific thing, you know, come in with a plan. Like, I would, I would definitely think about four or five artists that you're like, I really want to get this. I won't pay more than X amount of dollars for this stuff. You know, look around, try to really weigh out your options. Some places you're lucky and you can find vinyls at a decent cheap price. Um, once again, Discogs is an amazing site. You can get 
vinyl is really cheap. You can also get vinyls really expensive. It really depends on how rare they are versus like the demand. Um, but yeah, I mean, thrift stores. I've gotten I've gotten lucky and I've found some really cool vinyls just in thrift shops. But regular record stores. I mean, it, it's always good to support your local record store if you can. Um, so a couple records that I love. This is uh, the Stars of the Silver Screen. So it's all music from 1929 and 1930. Oh my god, it, it's a beautiful record. It's in like mint condition. You have so many people from that like golden age of Hollywood where they would do that. Well, this is like right when they're on the turn of kind of like silent films to like talkies, you know, that like 20s to 30s era. And I don't know, it, it's just amazing. They started doing tons and tons of musicals and stuff. It, it's just a great record. It has so many things, and it, it shows off a lot of, like, stuff from Tin Pan Alley, which used to be, you know, Midtown Manhattan, and they have Gloria Swanson, like, Dolores Del Rio, Lupe Velez. It's like, you had all these really cool people that you, I mean, think about it, like, in nine years from now, it'll be a hundred years since these people were going and were like at the top tier of their craft. Like some of these people are some of the, you know, most well-known people of the silver screen and of the original like old Hollywood. So it's so fascinating and yet the quality is still so good. I love listening to this at night, you know, when I'm reading a book or something. I'm actually... Um, I'm reading a book right now about New York's cabaret scene, and I'll like pop this on when I read it. Um, I guess to have the vibe. I don't know why, um, but I love this. It's such a good. Um, it was such a good find, and I found it for like a dollar. This bad boy, Pink Floyd. Everybody knows it. Everyone loves it. But this one is great, and this one is cool because. I actually got it in an eBay war. I got it in an eBay fight because I really wanted it this color. Colored vinyl is amazing. You know, who doesn't want to listen to Dark Side of the Moon and it's pink? I do. I love it. And I also have I have a Dark Side of the Moon that's like a, a genuine second press. So I don't really like to use that one as much just because it's a, it's second press, you know, like it, it's, it's like really, I, I don't want to say valuable, but it is in that sense. And it's in fantastic condition. This one is like, it's a later press. It's like an eighties kind of version. And I mean, just look at it. It's pink. Like that's so cool. I've always loved it. Dark Side of the Moon is one of my favorite records of all time. Um, I love Pink Floyd. I love that kind of psychedelic music and everything so you know I pop this in this is one of those albums that you want to sit and like listen to in the dark um, I used to have a couch in my closet because my closet isn't that big but I never really kept like my clothes in there it's just like my shoes on the top so I had this like one seater like chair that I would have and I would shut off all the lights in my room and play this record and I would just sit in there like in the dark and play it and it's just so peaceful and nice and you know um miss ella she is a fabulous fabulous gal i also got this at a thrift store it was a dollar um oh my god i just realized that somebody drew eyebrows on her that is so disrespectful <laughs> that's so rude <laughs> Ew, they tried to give her the like now modern eyebrows. Look at that. <laughs> that is so messed up. <laughs> oh my god, Ella, I'm so sorry. The disrespect, but I, I love Miss Ella. This is a collection of all of her love songs, all the different kinds of stuff that she does. Um. Oh, does it have one of my favorite songs by her? 
It does not, but <laughs> that's okay because it's still a great record. Once again, I, I got it for a dollar. I got it at a thrift store, just like a local thrift store to near uh, that's near my apartment. It's just a great record. It's in good condition. You should always check your records before you buy them. You don't just want to buy a random whatever. Obviously, if it's sealed, that's a bit different. It should be in pretty good condition, but um, you know, you want to take the record out, inspect it under light, kind of blow a little air over it to see if it's like super scratched up and then with scratches you want to check how deep the scratches are stuff like that you could always do the coin trick that people do where they put like a coin on the edge of the um stylus for the record player um and that kind of helps go over deeper scratches but so one of my favorite albums ever by the moody blues it's the album that has nights and white satin on it I think I bought this at a record store in New Jersey. Um, a friend of mine at the time drove us out there so that we could go and check it out. Um, I love the Moody Blues. Nights in White Satin is one of my favorite songs. But this album is really cool because it, it's like a rock album, but with a full-blown orchestra. Like, it has the London um, Festival Orchestra, which is nuts. Like, it's insane. And it's like a Baroque... It's like a Baroque pop rock album. It's incredible, and it's split up into parts, and it's just one of my favorite records, and it's also in really good condition. Um, I just had to share this because I love Jeff Buckley. I think I got this at... I think I got this at um, Barnes & Noble. <laughs> he, he had his, like, 25th anniversary of when this record came out, like, a year or two ago, so they were going and reselling it and I was like yes this album is perfect like from start to finish Jeff Buckley may he rest in peace is an underrated genius he's again one of those moody genius crazy dudes that I'm like I love you and if you were alive right now you would probably be 50 years old and you could get it easily 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 get it you know look at him isn't he dreamy Definitely an album you should listen to, Grace by Jeff Buckley, if you haven't. It's incredible. His voice is... He has the same vocal range as Pavarotti. You know, so that's a fun fact. Then we've got two, two bad boys right here. We got Queen. We got David Bowie. I got this one for a dollar. This one has the price on it still, which is... I don't know why I still have the price on it, but this was $15. <laughs> um, which, you know what, is kind of expensive for vinyl, in my opinion. I don't think anybody should be charging $15, but it's an amazing, amazing... Um, it's like almost near mint condition. Like, it's just the sleeve that is a little uh, messed up, but the, the vinyl itself is like pretty much perfect condition. And this is one of my fave Queen albums, you know, A Night at the Opera. I've been a Freddie Mercury fangirl since I was very young, very little. I love Freddie. I think he's awesome. May he also rest in peace. And then we got the other main man, David Bowie, right here. This is the um, the record that has Let's Dance on it, I believe. Um, yeah, Modern Love, Let's Dance, uh, you know, China Girl, all those bops. We know David Bowie is another incredible amazing dude um yeah it's kind of crazy like the difference in price between these two this is a dollar and this is fifteen dollars like some records could go for you know even more than that i mean they go crazy people will sell records for crazy prices um it says the go goes i got this at the same time that i got the Fred Mer freddie mercury and queen record um i love the go goes uh, Belinda Carlisle is, I think, the main singer or the only singer here. <laughs> but this album is incredible. I think it's just a self-titled album. Or no, it's Beauty and the Beat. Amazing. I mean, the Go-Go's are, like, an amazing, like, 80s all-girl, like, rock band. They're so cool. Like, I wish I could be the Go-Go's. You know? That would be, like, a dream come true. It's a great record. I think I paid, like, eight bucks for it, which... 
it's not that bad when it comes to like vinyls, I guess. Um, but yeah. This one is probably my most expensive one, but it was worth it. This is my favorite Beatles album of all time, Rubber Soul. Um, it doesn't have my favorite song of all time by the Beatles on it. My favorite song is um, Don't Let Me Down. But it has a lot of my favorite songs, and it's a record that I can listen to from top to bottom. It's incredible. I spent like $35 on this in Los Angeles, but that's because I'd never seen it in person. And another record store that I went to was selling it for like 70 bucks. So that that's, you know, you can see how crazy people go when they try to sell records and sell vinyls. They can be really unfair and just greedy when it comes to stuff like that. Like, I, I don't know. I think music is a universal language. And we should be willing and wanting to share it with everybody and have everyone be able to experience it. Is it, you know, it, it helps unify us. It brings us together. So when people do stuff like that, it makes it, it doesn't make it accessible to everybody because not everybody can afford to drop $70. But this was like $35. And I had the money at the time. And I was like, it's worth it. I've only seen this bad boy once in person. And this is my favorite Beatles record. So I bought it and I got to test it out. And I don't know, it was, it's just such a good album. Rubber Soul. Um, and the last final I'm going to share, because this video is so long, and I know nobody wants to hear me talk that long, but it is Rumors by Fleetwood Mac. This is kind of a staple album. I have a lot of Stevie Nicks records. I have, like, a, a like a four-record um, thing of, I think, like, all of her solo work. I also have Tusk by Fleetwood Mac, and I have the original Fleetwood Mac CD album, um, and I have another one that is the original incarnation of Fleetwood Mac with Peter Green, who unfortunately just passed away. So, you know, rest in peace, Peter Green. Uh, but yeah, I got this actually as a birthday gift a few years ago. You can't go wrong with Fleetwood Mac. You can't go wrong with Miss Stevie Nicks and Mick Fleetwood. I actually got to see Fleetwood Mac at the Forum in L.A., uh, on their last tour, so that was December of 2018. I went by myself because nobody wanted to go with me, and no one really cared about Fleetwood Mac, so I was like, I'm gonna go by myself. I had tickets right near the stage, but like off to the side, next to the stage, in like the third row. I bought myself a Jameson and ginger ale, and I had a banging time. And I knew all the words, and it was such an awesome, awesome, awesome night. You know? So, definitely worth it. Fleetwood Mac is an incredible band. Thankfully, you know, they're still around, still kicking, still going on tours. I mean, not right now because of the coronavirus, but, you know, you know what I mean. Friends, that is all for me. I hope you liked it. I hope that this, I don't know, gave you a little bit of an idea of maybe some different stuff that you could get the next time you're thinking about going to a record store. I don't know. Maybe you learned a little bit about me <laughs> looking through some of my personal collection and some of the things that I really enjoy. Um, yeah, if you want me to talk more about music, music history, different artists or stuff, I was kind of thinking about doing like album reviews at some point, but as we all know, I'm not really tech savvy, so it, it makes me a little nervous to do it because I, I can't do, like, the editing aspects. Um, even though I've tried, I've tried to learn, but it, it's like, I don't know, I'm, I'm like, I'm definitely an old man when it comes to learning stuff like that. It's definitely going to take me um, some time, but yeah, if you want to hear more about different music stuff, I would love to talk about it. No one ever wants to talk about it, at least... No one ever wants to, like, music nerd out and talk about, like, guitars and all sorts of bands and everything like that. So if you are interested, if you liked this video, if you liked this kind of content, please let me know. Leave a comment, you know, and I will see you guys very, very soon. Stay snazzy and have a good day, guys.